Hi everybody, Dr. Tina here. I wanted to take an opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself and how it is I came to be an executive coach for engineers, scientists, and IT professionals across the STEM community. Have you heard of the expression, I was hired for my great technical skills, but I was fired for my poor people skills? Well, I can tell you firsthand that there is a lot of truth in this statement. So let me share a little bit about myself and my 25 year journey towards realizing the value of people skills, which are often neglected at the expense of technical skills. Yes, today I work across the engineering, science and IT community to help leaders and influencers bridge the gap between their technical expertise and leadership competence, particularly by helping them to enhance their interpersonal skills. What I have learned during my 25 year career is that effective people skills are the foundation of interpersonal influence. And without them, we experience stress, vulnerability, and anxiety in our work life. So my typical coaching clients are frequently sidetracked by poor interpersonal skills, often at the expense of big picture issues. As a consequence, my typical clients if you see yourself among this group, experience stress, anxiety, and feelings of overwhelm and frustration in their work life, in your work life, and your business outcomes suffer. More often than not, clients who seek me out say they want help with their leadership skills or to change their focus to big, t big picture issues. However, time and time again, what I find is that what they really need help with is improving their people skills. From my own experience as an engineer in my earlier professional life and through my observations as an executive coach, scientists, engineers, and technical professionals often monopolize certain challenging personality behaviors in the workplace. And these personality behaviors make our transition from successful technical professionals to influential leaders quite difficult. Many scientists, engineers, and technical professionals evolve into senior positions without ever having to develop our interpersonal skills. We're simply expected to get on with it. And guess what? It is our gifted intellectual abilities and formative educational experience that plays a significant role in our ineffective interpersonal skills. That's right, the gift of one led us to underdeveloping our other skills. Compounding the situation, of course, is the contemporary reality that is technology. Technology is omnipresent in our environment. And so again, let me stress through no fault of our own, we have endured a failed education system. The emergence of technology has compounded the failings of our education system. Not only did we not learn the soft skills for developing interpersonal connections, We've also been conned into thinking that having virtual friends is the same as having great interpersonal. Technology has allowed us to create superficial friends, not deep, meaningful relationships. There isn't an app for great people skills. As adults who want to influence others, we have to learn skills of cooperation. We have to learn skills of cooperation. So don't blame yourself. You were not prepared for this type of working environment. Your education system failed you and the omnipresence of technology has failed you. You now have to work extra hard to overcome these lack of interpersonal skills. Again, let me state that our lack of interpersonal skills has occurred through no fault of our own as engineers, scientists, and IT professionals. I can say this with confidence. It is because of our natural intellectual gifts that have led to the rigorous academic challenges and ever increasing technical specialization that we pursued in high school, college, and grad school, even in our subsequent continuing professional studies. We have spent more and more of our intellectual capital focusing on a narrower and narrower technical field, which in turn left no time or incentive to explore the softer skills subject. Our fixation on specialization can be explained through the contemporary history of engineering education and the process of engineering education currently practiced in most engineering institutions, which by the way, is a creation of the Cold War era when the country demanded rapid delivery of more and more engineers and scientists with very specific STEM skills. In fact, it was the 1955 Grintner report that called for more science and math to be pulled into the engineering curriculum to the exclusion of other practical subjects. 
soft skills. The academic training of increasingly narrow specialists was aligned with the technological demands of the Cold War era. And industry leaders wanted engineers to shut up, sit down and do what they were asked. We were simply designed to serve as small cogs in large bureaucracies. As a result, most engineers and scientists were not trained to become leaders, not trained to be influencers, not trained to be people, 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 persons, people, people. Rather, we were trained to be simple cogs in the production line. So as a result of the consequence of both our superior academic abilities and the further special specialization of STEM subjects, very little time or emotional energy was left for the exploration or development of critical soft skills. And I have to admit, this applies to me personally, back in the day, sometimes even intellectual arrogance crept into our psyche as we convinced ourselves that being smarter than the average bear was all that really mattered. Stated another way, many very smart people have been inadvertently diverted from a path to developing effective people skills or developing effective influencing skills because of our superior intellect. This is quite the catch-22, isn't it? Our academic focus, for the most part, excluded critical foundational topics and experiences in interpersonal effective, such as developing self-awareness, awareness of others, interpersonal communication, mastering group dynamics, understanding organizational dynamics, collaborating or effectively working across generational cohorts, professional disciplines, or even different cultures. As a former engineer and now an executive coach, I recognize that most executives don't have the luxury of stepping aside and attending a campus-based interpersonal skills development program. So typically you can only commit to a personal development solution that's 100% applicable to your immediate work life. Well, let me tell you that in my own dark period in my early career, I discovered that coaching is 100% applicable because it enabled me to become more effective working on improving my people skills. For me, this was a just-in-time solution. At the beginning of my life, I was at the beginning of my professional life, I was employed as an engineer, project manager, program manager for about nine years. And I can see this time very distinctly in three each three-year chunks. By the end of my third year in the third chunk, so by the end of my ninth year, I felt I had plateaued. What it turned out to be was that I was stuck. I was just stuck. All my colleagues were moving ahead and I was stuck and I could not figure out what happened. During the first three years of my career, my skills, my confidence was improving daily. My clients loved me. My end users loved me. I was brilliant. I was invincible. In fact, I remember being 20 something and feeling invincible. Then I got into the middle three years and Everything seemed about pushing through all of my mental and professional barriers and expanding my professional repertoire. It was go, 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 go. I get into the last three years of being an engineer and project manager, and it was like dragging myself out of tar every day. And that when I eventually recognized that I was stuck, as an engineer in the facilities and construction industry, I had a great team around me for most of my professional life. Among this team of high performers, I eventually came to recognize that I was stuck, especially when comparatively skilled colleagues were moving ahead, both organizationally and professionally, while I appeared to hit the proverbial brick wall. I was in a dark place. I have to admit it. I can remember it well. I was in a dark place. I recognized that I lacked influence. I had no network. I had merely competitors. My mentor, a brilliant human being, suggested that I engage an executive coach as he felt he was too close to give me objective advice about my professional stagnation. And I remember thinking, engineers don't hire coaches. We're smart enough to figure this out for ourselves. Oh, the arrogance of you. Fortunately, karma heads prevailed and I pursued a coaching engagement. I eventually made the investment in myself. I found this to be a watershed experience. I developed self-awareness, albeit the experience of learning about myself and how others perceived me was excruciatingly painful. For the first time in my career, I began to see how others saw me 
and the disconnect was striking. That first journey into self was the most revealing yet most difficult road my logical mind has ever travelled. I still cringe when I recall some of the insights I gained. Through the coaching experience, I discovered that I had created my own brick wall. I had built my barrier to professional success myself. I had created my own brick wall. I was the only person impeding my professional advancement. I discovered I was a jerk. I discovered I had no people skills. Through coaching, I experienced a tectonic shift in my professional well-being, which resulted in my accelerated transition from technical positions to becoming an emerging executive within 12 months of the coaching engagement. I cannot stress this point enough. The journey into self-awareness made me easier to work with. Developing interpersonal skills made me easier to work with and also gave me the tools to work with others and allowed me to be more influential and causing colleagues to seek me out and listen to me, whereas before they were just completely shutting down when I'd walk into the room. I grew as a leader and an influencer simply because I had improved my interpersonal skills. Coaching is a transformative experience. It taught me how to truly see myself and taught me how to see other people for what they are and that they're not simply cogs in a production wheel. I will admit that my mentor forced me into coaching, but the outcome was amazing. It caused me to reflect upon my interpersonal limitations, specifically my lack of people skills and how these poor people skills were causing me unnecessary stress, anxiety and overwhelm at work and were also holding me back professionally. Unequivocally, I achieved personal and professional growth and I transitioned at that point. My, I can pinpoint it very clearly in my mind's eye. I transitioned from being an engineer to an emerging executive simply because of the power of coaching. As I progressed professionally, I discovered that as a leader, I was also expected to coach my own team. Over several months, I fundamentally changed my personal perspective about myself and others. I developed interpersonal skills. I learned to recognize great interpersonal skills in others and began to emulate them. I also began to be aware of poor people skills in others and cautiously help them to overcome. Over time, I studied the art and science of coaching, not only to satisfy my own natural curiosity, but also to help improve the performance of my team. And I discovered I excelled at coaching, loved it, loved it, loved it, still love it. At some point in my career, I recognized that I would eventually pivot away from executive functions and become a full-time executive coach myself. Voila, since 2013, I now pursue my second career as an executive coach. I am delighted to be working with engineers and other high-performing individuals who aspire to achieve greater executive influence. I could never have achieved such deep self-awareness or professional growth without the help of my own various executive coaching experiences. Do you remember when you first started out in the workplace, the passion you had, the curiosity, the engagement, the dreams? Do you still have those? Do you miss that part of your life? As a coach, my job is to help you observe, to assess and to guide your professional development to returning you to a state of passion and curiosity. As a coach, I tell you what others will not or can't tell you about your interpersonal skills and your impact on others. Whatever the reason that brings you to seeking out a coach, the top three objectives are co of coaching are developing self-awareness, especially of the behaviors that are holding you back, enhancing your awareness of others and how and why they view the world the way they do, and thirdly, developing interpersonal skills towards influencing others to follow your lead. So the bottom line, I became a coach because I experienced the power of coaching and I recognize how many of my STEM brethren could gain huge professional advantages and become more influential in your organization if you begin to develop your own interpersonal skills. I once had poor people skills and during that time, I experienced stress, anxiety and overwhelm in my work life. I have been there where you are now. I understand your pain and I can help you to build the foundation that you need to bridge the gap towards becoming a better people person.